again everyone, welcome back to another episode of Final Fantasy Brave XVS. My name is Mars, and today we're going to be talking about the true dual wield meta, and I'm saying it with verbal air quotes, uh, because there's a lot of things that people should probably consider before they jump ship onto the true dual wield train, uh, which is coming at you very soon with our boy uh, Zeno, who's coming around the corner. Um, and so a lot of people are kind of wondering, they're like, well, is it is it in my best interest to start doing true dual wield units now or am i good with what i've got should i invest in the true dual wield meta in general is that something i should plan on so today what i want to talk about is kind of highlight the progression of the meta as we've seen it in the japanese version of the game to illustrate kind of a roadmap that we have to make some of these decisions but before we jump into that, it's important to remember the history of Final Fantasy Brave Exvius and the way that power creep has changed over time. So, the very when the game first came out, the first thing that we had was just simple attacks with simple modifiers. Maybe they were multiple hit, or maybe they were just barely better in auto attacks, and uh, very simple attacks. Damage was simply based on, you know, who had the highest stat with the highest modifier, and that was about it. And then along came the Barrage meta, and the Barrage meta was incredible at the time because it allowed damage dealers to attack many times, and this was the first instance where we saw a, a shift in, in the damage meta. It was like, okay, well, you can use basic attacks or you can do the shiny new Barrage meta, and there were units that came out with Barrage, and there was the Barrage TMR, and people were using all that stuff to help maximize their damage. And then from there we moved into the Orlando era, and the Orlando era was categorized by damage dealers that had, usually they had imperils attached to their skills, their abilities were multi-hit, so they could form elemental chains very easily, and oftentimes these characters benefited from dual wields. So what we saw was dual wielding elemental chainers that usually also had an imperil attached, and, and that was the next iteration of damage. And the thing that's important to keep in mind about this progression in damage is that we never regressed back to a barrage meta. Barrage never came back into relevance again. Like, that was never a meta again for us in the game. Once it was gone, it was pretty much gone. And uh, the same was kind of the same with just plain old dual wield chainers. You know, once we moved into true double hand units, which came next. Uh, once we moved into true double hand, we stopped seeing kind of the plain dual wield chainers. And of course you still see some here and there. And uh, we do have a little bit of true dual wield with units like CG Last Will and stuff like that that have helped some dual wielders to stay a lot more relevant, which has been awesome. Uh, Tifa is another great example. She stayed relevant uh, thanks to the introduction of true dual wield. Um, you know, uh, in its infant form. But now we're kind of at an interesting spot in the game because we've been using true double hand damage dealers for a long time. Once Elfrida and Cloud came out and they provided us with the true double hand equipment that we needed to gear double hand damage dealers, that was when we made this big shift to true double hand damage. And uh, this has been the meta for us for quite a minute now. Um, even when those items came out, that pretty much did it. Two handed weapons, true double hand, that's the way to go. Now, true dual wield is a new and upcoming sort of feature that starts with Xeno for us and that JP saw later in their own cycle. And what this allows people to do is they can form stronger chain modifiers with true dual wielders and they get additional equipped attack when wielding two weapons. So it's essentially a dual wield mirror of the true double hand setup basically and there are some pros and cons between the two true double handers benefit from damage variants and uh they can have a higher attack stat and you use the full attack stat on all of your attacks regardless of multicasting now a true dual wield you tend to have lower mp cost because your attacks hit twice and you have the increased chain modifier with the true dual wielders when uh, with starting with xeno and then many other characters to come and also you benefit from innate elements. You don't usually need to self-imbue, you don't need to have somebody else imbue you. Oftentimes you can equip elemental weapons to make that aspect much easier. So honestly, the two are pretty equal in the trade-offs that they provide. And I'm gonna show you a graphic right now. And this is another one of my hastily constructed graphics that is simply used to help illustrate kind of the roadmap that we had to have ahead of us. Now, what is going to come for us, 
you know, assuming we follow a similar pattern to the Japanese version of the game, we're going to receive CG Lightning as a premier true dual wield chainer. Uh, she's somebody a lot of people have looked forward to. She's an amazing unit, she does a lot of damage, and she has the equivalent of Buster style for true dual wield. So when you have this materia equipped, it gives you 100% equipped attack when dual wielding. And this is a pretty important piece of equipment if you're going to be running true dual wield units. So for example, if you decide to pull for Xeno uh, this week, then you're probably gonna wanna keep your eye on lightning. Of course, you know, I don't know what Xeno stats are yet. Maybe you won't want it in his final build, but I'm just guessing, okay? As I'm recording this video, I don't know any of those stats just yet. Now the next true dual wielder to come out that kind of shifts the, the playing field a little bit is Bartz, and Bartz is notoriously powerful. He's an extremely powerful damage dealer, he uses true dual wield, and his TMR is an accessory that is basically the martial glove of, um, of true dual wield. So with him and lightning, you can use their equipment to get 200% true dual wield on any character in the game, basically. And uh, one of the things that has made true dual wield unique is that for many people, we thought when we were seeing this in JP, we're like, oh, this is the direction that the game is permanently going. Oh, once we start down the true dual wield path, that's going to be the meta. You're going to want to pull a lightning, you're going to want to pull a Bartz or two so that you have those true dual wield equipments. But then the Japanese version of the game gave us a little bit of a surprise. True Double Hand came back into play and is now on top of the meta. As you can see in this little split here from, from CG Bartz, we have a couple of, uh, I'll just call them the chairmen. That's, uh, it's, it's the two chairmen, the chairman units. They are True Double Hand units and they are top tier damage dealers. So in terms of the meta, they are meta tier damage dealers and they have returned to True Double Hand. So this is something that honestly, I think if you watch the pattern of the game and the way that it's developed, you might be surprised to see that this happened because you know we never went back to a barrage meta. We never went back to simple dual wheel chaining or any of those other things. And so you know why would we then also go back to true double hand? But that's where this is a surprise and perhaps a, a welcome one at that. Um, but also the true dual wield meta has continued to evolve. As you can see with CG Onion Knight, he is kind of the next iteration of true dual wield damage. He's an outstanding damage dealer and he holds his own against these true double hand units and they've kind of evolved into separate gearing options. So ultimately what this means for you is that if you have true double hand equipment, you don't have to pull for true dual wielders. You, you just don't have to do that. However, if you don't have true double hand stuff, you've struggled to get it, or it's been something that you know you just don't care for, or you just prefer the true dual wielders, that's where you can make this departure because my best guess is that we're gonna continue to see this pattern where double handers and dual wielders are both going to be viable options, at least for the foreseeable future. And not just viable options, but meta ones. Um, to see some brand new units come out on the JP side of the game and to see that they are top tier damage dealers and that they use true double hand equipment, that is awesome. Because for us that means, hey, you know what, I can wait. You know, I have I have Esther, I have Axtar, or maybe I want to pull for Regina later. And once I have them, maybe I don't want to pull again. Maybe I'm not that interested in Lightning or Barts or Onion Knight. I kind of want to skip them. I can totally do that and I know that it's not going to kill my opportunities in the game later. I know that true double handers are going to come down the line and that I'm going to be able to use them with the equipment that I currently have. And ultimately, this is a recommendation that I think I would make for a lot of free to play or budget players. People who have limited amounts of resources and limited options, if you are sitting on true double hand gear going for true dual wield is a hundred percent optional. It is totally up to you and your preferences. And it's not to say that the true dual wielders are bad. Uh, they're absolutely meta units when they come out and they hold their own uh, for a long time. Uh, but the true double handers don't go away. And that's that's kind of where the distinction is. So if you're interested to get in on that true dual wield meta, go for it. If you love Lightning Bart's Onion Knight, or some of the others who may come out, go for them. There's nothing wrong with those units. They're excellent. And it may help you if you're somebody who doesn't have true double hand gear, this could be your opportunity to get some true dual wield because the nice thing is you don't need a full set 
the, to the same degree that you need for true double hand because like the standard true double hand set has been two martial gloves and a buster style in the case of true dual wield the attack percentage cap is only 200 percent instead of 300 which means that if you have lightning and lightning's tmr alone uh, that's probably enough for a lot of your future true dual wielders now of course if you get a lightning and a bartz or an onion knight that'll give you 150 percent true dual wield with their respective pieces of equipment that they grant and that will cover you for virtually all of the future true dual wield units which means it's a little bit cheaper to kind of get in on the ground floor with true dual wield so those are kind of my thoughts with that um ultimately to answer the question of is it worth it to go for true dual wield it's a you know you'll see you'll be like i called it <laughs> mars is gonna say it's it depends and it's 100 percent true here um, if you have true double hand stuff, there's no need whatsoever for you to go for true dual wield. Uh, the damage from our current damage dealers is more than sufficient, um, and they're going to continue to hold out, especially when they get enhancements. So as far as a need goes, if you have true double hand stuff, absolutely not necessary, um, especially because we know other true double hand meta damage dealers are going to come down the line. Now, if you don't have it, you could go, if you don't have true double hand, you can go for the dual wield. And and these units are cool. At the end of the day, go for the units that you like the most. Um, personally, because I haven't played a lot of the original FF titles, I tend to be very, uh, I, I tend to favor the FFBE original. So for me, I might be like, all right, you know, I, I'm hooked up with Esther or Axstar or whatever. I'm going to hold out until I get, you know, the CG chairman or, or, or whatever, it, whatever it is. Um, or maybe you're a fan of the classic titles and you just love Lightning or Barts or, or Onion Knight, and that's where you can make that choice for yourself. But uh, otherwise, if you're set up with True Double Hand, do not feel obligated to go down the True Dual Wield route. It will be the meta, but as all metas go, it's going to pass away eventually. And the good news is True Double Hand comes back. It bucks the trend and it does come back in a major way. So if you pass, you're not shooting yourself in the foot at least within the me the immediate long run that we can see you know for the next nine to 12 months uh you're completely fine with not going for true dual wield so let me know in the comments below what are you going to be going down uh, are you going to be choosing the true dual wield route or the true double hand route and if so which character are you most excited for to come down the line i know i only listed a few examples here on this graphic um there there are characters that many people are going to be excited about for me i'm i'm probably going to stick to my roots and go with true double hand for a lot of stuff uh but you know i like to make content so you'll probably see me dabbling in the true dual wield realm as well so let me know in the comments below uh tell me what you would like to see next time and i will see everybody in the next video Calling